I am holding a pulse rifle. I don't know any other way than to begin that. Hi, Stephen. <laughs> hey, Adam. How you doing, man? Very good. Adam Savage in London at Prop Store. They have a huge auction happening right now in the UK of some insanely iconic and amazing props. And you, Stephen, have probably held more pulse rifles than most anybody. <laughs> but I think this is the first real one I've ever had in my hands. Well, there we go, man. We popped your cherry with a pulse oh, rifle today. <laughs> I am. <laughs> we were just waiting for the camera to start. And I just went, I'm holding a pulse rifle. What, tell me about the history and lineage of this piece. Well, one of the reasons that I've held so many pulse rifles over the years is, of course, that they were made of Bapti. And Bapti was the armorers for Aliens, as well as Star Wars, Flash Gordon, Clash of the Titans, so many films Everything. of this particular era. Yes, yeah. absolutely. They were, were the guys. Uh, Simon Atherton, of course, was the armorer on Aliens as well. So a he legend. was instrumental. Absolute legend in his time, for sure. And so he was instrumental in piecing a lot of these together and bringing them all together uh, with the rest of the Bapti team. Um, this is a particular pulse rifle that would have been used initially in Aliens. So this would have been a live fire gun used for Aliens. So the interior mech of this is a Thompson machine gun. That's what I was going to say. It yeah. felt like there were real gun parts. It's a real, here. oh yeah, no, absolutely. You're holding a, a, the, the Thompson, you can see, come right down through yeah. here. And then this is the, the barrel through the through the top here. Um, and then what happened subsequently was that they went back to Bapti. Uh, a lot of the shrouds were stripped off. Oh, so the original gun parts all ended up back at the same armor. Absolutely. Okay, yeah. Yes, so if we take a step back in time, that was, that was common practice during this era that these sort of things were made to hire. Right. So they were made for the production company, obviously as, uh, as well because they were live fire, arm, live fire firearms, they couldn't be owned by the production company. In the UK, firearms laws are very, very strict. Yes. So they had to be owned by the, uh, the armorers, so they went out, they came back again subsequently. Then they were stripped back of their dressing. A lot of the dressing came off them because, of course, they're going to want to put them back into their inventory for reuse for any, any production that came along that needed a Thompson machine gun. Um, and then there was this last minute call on Alien 3 where the Colonial Marines were going to come in, or a version of the Marines were going to come in at the end of the movie. And they were like, we want them to be having pulse rifles. And so they very quickly took a, an original aluminium shroud and they did a pop off that. They did a squeeze off that on a vac forming machine, which is why the VAC form Alien 3 shrouds are that much softer than you get. They are that definition. much softer, That's yeah. That's it, yeah, because they're one generation away from the original. Um, so yeah, a lot of information about a, a wonderful firearm. Well, so the, 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 the reason they would take these apart, just to be really clear, is like Simon and Babke goes through all this trouble, would go through all this trouble to import a working firearm and use it in the legal fashion and they bring it back, they don't want to just put it up on the wall, they got to put it into other props, Absolutely, right? yeah, yeah, I mean it's there for, I mean it might be, a, you know, it could easily go onto a World War II film, for example, you know, could it right. be on Simon right. Private Ryan, you know, a few years later or whatever it might be. And because live firearms in the UK are so hard to acquire as well, wherever they can save them and reuse them, that's the practice yeah. that they got into. So yeah. that's exactly what was going on here. Yeah, for sure. So to be clear, this isn't a live fire weapon now. Has it it's been decommissioned? Yeah, correct. So this would have been live fire for the film. Right. Uh, and the, one of the reasons for that, for those people who don't know, is that a live fire gun is used rather than a blank firing gun because a blank firing gun is often restricted in the barrel. Right. So that means that the gases are not being ejected through the front of the barrel. They're coming out through, through a side port. So it wouldn't look real on film. So that's why they use live fire fire guns, but this has subsequently been deactivated and is stamped by the London Proof House. So this is decommissioned now, no longer functional, very few moving parts to it. And in the decommissioning, they remove the firing pin, but they also remove the ability to ever put a firing pin back in exactly. and make the thing and they, function. And they weld some of the components up as well. Right, yes. right. Yeah, I have yeah. a couple of, de I have a decommissioned uh, Indiana Jones Webley. Right, uh, Smith okay. & Wesson, actually, and it's right. got... It's hard to spot where it has been disabled, but it's been very thoroughly disabled. Yeah, and that's actually a, a, an interesting part of this is that you know you when when you are deactivating guns in the UK, so when we find something that's live, you want to be going to the right person to do that decommissioning. So they're really really sensitive about the way that they're doing that work. So aesthetically, obviously with this, a lot of it's hidden by the shroud, but in some instances you're like you know don't destroy this part of it because that's specific to the film. Exactly. So it's, it's always a conversation. That's fascinating. I love seeing the like big dollops of brazing here holding the triangle cage on top of this bass cage. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, it's just it's just an indication of how quickly they were trying to pull this all back together yeah, again, yeah. get everything prepped for the filming. Uh, and obviously, it's finished in black rather than in the green that we've become so familiar with for pulse rifles as well. Yeah, the 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 the. the... <laughs> I'm trying to be very delicate. <laughs> You've done a great job. <laughs> 
Uh, yeah, the brown bass. Yes, the brown bass. I mean, of course, there were debates about the color for so many. Sorry, I called it green. No. Well, I, everyone thinks it's green. It looks green on film. I'm of the opinion that it is all brown bass. I could be wrong. Everyone could be wrong. That's, that's a debate. Yeah. It is an I mean, ongoing. the one thing that we can say is we've we've handled other elements, other props. You know, in fact, in this prop store auction itself. Yeah. We've got other hand props that were painted at the same time of, you know, in the same color, so we know that we can compare directly to those. I saw the shoulder light. Exactly. That looks the like brown bass. Exactly. There, there we, go. we go. So we so we've got that reference now. We know exactly what it should be. So this is this is fascinatingly then both an Aliens and Alien 3 pulse rifle. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, this is, this is a mix of both. This is one of those situations where it's been used in one film and then repurposed again for a, for a sequel. You know, uh, I do a lot, as viewers know and you know, I do a lot of prop replication and it often involves spending lots of time trying to get minutia exactly perfect. But in producing for film, we can see the level of perfection has, <laughs> the bar is lower. And this is just like, we gotta get this across the line, both those together. They're not necessarily square, but that doesn't matter. We're just getting these together to get this out the door. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. No, and I think, look, look going back this during this period, what are we talking about? Maybe DVDs would, no, they weren't even on the horizon for Alien 3, were they? I mean, it's, it's just, at this time, nobody was really thinking that anybody would be coming back and exactly. looking at it in the level of detail we've been doing so subsequently. Today, of course, you see the hand props are at another level more often than not. You know, they are exactly as you'd expect them to look and be. But during this era, no, I think there was a lot, of, lot forgiven. Well, and I, the crunchiness always feels like a hug to me. Like, I like how crunchy it is. I can see the, I like the way a good deadline lops branches off your decision tree. Right, right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Good enough. Yeah, 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 for sure. Ooh, uh, okay. I think I'm <laughs> gonna have to put this down because I'm i hearing things rattle around and this is way too valuable. This is an amazing, unbelievable piece. I love that it's from two different movies. Yeah, it looks good on you, man. Oh, I think it's you. <laughs> the perfect gonna, accessory from London. Thank you so much for letting me hold this. Pleasure, Just, man. I appreciate it.